Hi, and welcome to Talking Head, um, the podcast where we discuss queer things, I guess. Yeah. My name's Aura. My name is Max. Today we will be talking about being queer, non-binary, gender non-conforming, whatever term you want to <laughs> apply to it, because we just identify as queer, but really it means identifying as neither a man or a woman, right? I mean, yes, I guess, I suppose. Would you? <laughs> I mean, it already feels like a little like... In a box. Yeah, yeah. and like not encompassing mm. enough. I guess, I suppose, mm-hmm. but we can delve into that in this 30-minute yeah. Zoom conversation. I'm already feeling the pressure <laughs> of time. <laughs> so why are we talking about being queer? <laughs> well, um, we are queer, so <laughs> I guess that makes sense. <laughs> That's it, um, end of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the conversation. We're queer. We're here. Deal with it. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess for us, the important thing is when we met, like, about nine years ago as straight girls, <laughs> or whatever. Supposedly. Um, like, there wasn't a lot of media to, like, learn about being queer, and mm-hmm. about what being queer entails, and... And especially, um, like, when you're talking about queer, obviously, like, queer is such an umbrella term, and there was, like... Um, in terms of sexuality, there was more representation um, than in terms of gender, and I think that's the important part. Like, you know, there there was queer representation in the sense that there was gay people <laughs> on TV sometimes. <laughs> but, sometimes, yeah, but you know, like after 10 p.m. and when you'd see it, you'd run out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, definitely anything mm-hmm. gender related. Um, and more specifically, like gender queer related, was definitely not on the uh, in the cards, or you know, it wasn't discussed right? at all. Yeah, and I also feel like, like even now, I feel like there's not a lot of like representation. Yeah. So I really just like want to talk with you about like, okay, well, how do you feel, and how did you get there, and like, how do I feel, and because there's there's so many different ways to like be queer, be queer yeah. and I feel like we really only get shown like this much of it um and i know like baby laura had like a lot of problems of being like okay well so i guess i'm not a girl that's great what am i yeah then okay i guess i'm queer i only see this like one picture of like assigned female at birth people with like the pixie cut and (laughs) (laughs) and the the oversized flannel shirt and like that's it i guess that that's the way to be queer Mm. and like I had no idea of like the spectrum and and all the things you could like still explore and that there's you know different styles different Mm. ways to be queer yeah exactly Um, i mean even looking at us like we identify technically as the same thing but we're obviously like very (laughs) different (laughs) right (laughs) so yeah i mean it's definitely interesting i think a lot of people don't realize that being queer um is such a like diverse thing um i don't think people who aren't queer themselves would think we could possibly identify as the same thing you know um Mm -hmm. and yeah i guess i'll just talk a bit about myself (laughs) more what what do we identify as maybe we should clarify that i mean i identify as queer mostly um that's the label i use for both my sexuality and my gender identity um, because it's quite, quite vague <laughs> and at the same time all-encompassing. So, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, what about same. you? <laughs> <laughs> what about me? Well, I mean, very much the same, mm. I suppose. I sometimes tell people I'm non-binary if it's like... I guess I, I do the same thing with sexuality where it's like I prefer pansexual, but then there's like people that don't get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, I'm bi. Just to like... <laughs> Yep. Ease them into it. (laughs) Make the conversation a little bit like more palpable for them. And so I guess I do the same thing with being queer, where Mm -hmm. if people like kind of get it, I'll be like, yeah, I'm queer. Or if I don't feel like explaining what on earth that might mean, I'll just be like, yeah, I'm non binary. Because they like, they get it faster. Yeah, it's it's a more specific label to, you know, explain things. And yeah, I, and people are I'm like, exactly the same way. <laughs> yeah. What I really want to know is what it was like for you 
because um, my journey pretty much was like, oh, okay, guess I'm not a girl. Try to find out what else I could be and like sort of immediately landing on um, like in the queer spectrum, in the non-binary queer spectrum. Mm -hmm. But you um, identified as like fully like binary trans yeah. at first, right? So yeah, yeah I want to know what that was like for you. Yeah, um, I mean, it's honestly weird because I feel like <laughs> I don't even fully remember um, how it changed, if that makes sense. Because um, when I was 15, I think, I uh, kind of started reading up about transness. And um, that was really the first time that it was, that I realized it was a possibility for girls to be, well, mm -hmm. girls, um, to also <laughs> be trans men. Um, because mm -hmm. the only thing I'd ever heard of in terms of trans people were trans women. Um, so, yeah, I started learning about trans men, um, you know, looking up videos on YouTube, stuff like that, and realizing that I uh, felt a lot of the same things that I was hearing trans men talk about. Um, and even like as a small child, <laughs> well, not that small, but when I was about 10, puberty started slowly creeping in. Um, I really like changed as a kid. My mom always says I, um, I was like a really happy child. And then once I like started growing boobs and stuff like that, I just became this like um, introverted kind of kid, like quiet and, and all that stuff. And uh, it was a really big change for them as well. Um, so I guess the dysphoria has always been <laughs> been <laughs> there um, <laughs> since puberty started. Um, but obviously I didn't fully realize. And then, uh, yeah, once I started reading up about trans people, I realized that I, what I was feeling was dysphoria. Um, so pretty much because I had only found uh, trans guys talking about dysphoria, I didn't really realize that being non-binary was even an option. Um, mm -hmm. So again, it just, yeah, it just made sense to me that I was, if I wasn't a girl, I was probably just a guy. Um, so for the longest time, I just, you know, that was my truth, <laughs> um, in that sense. And just uh, living my truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And I, I knew I, I wanted to transition medically. So I started testosterone and I had top surgery. Um, but then that was kind of the magic solution in a way, because once I'd had top surgery and I was on testosterone and I felt more comfortable in my body and, and most of the dysphoria was gone. I just realized like, oh, I'm just a person, you know, um, and I felt comfortable enough to re evaluate, I guess, um, how I was really feeling. And especially when you then identified, started identifying mm -hmm. as non-binary or queer or whatever, I guess I just kind of realized that that was more true than um, what I'd always thought. Um, but I don't, yeah, I don't really remember that transition. Mm -hmm. Um, it just kind of became apparent <laughs> that I wasn't a guy. <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> but then... No, but I think it's interesting and, like, it sort of makes sense to me as well. Because, like, I never, I never questioned you, right? I was just like, oh, okay, so Max is a boy. Mm. Great. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great, yeah. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. You know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, but just, like, it made sense. And I was like, okay, cool. So this is, like, a thing that happens. Um, and then later down... <laughs> this, yeah, that's a happen. thing that happens. Like, this is... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Like, that's... Yeah. It was just like, okay. It's a possibility, you know? Like... That's, that's who you are. Mm. Cool. Um, but then later down the line, like, way later down the line in our friendship, when you, like... Um, told me like, oh, I I might actually feel more non-binary as well. That didn't feel weird to me at all. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. I see that for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever think I was coming for your brand? <laughs> for sure. I was like, oh my god, how dare you? <laughs> um, this is being a, queer my is special my identity. Thing. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't come for your brand either. 
<laughs> no, definitely not. But I think it is funny that in a way we like sort of like helped each other in that mm. process, I'd say, because um, because of your first coming out, that was actually my first realization where I was like, yeah. Oh my god, this you is a do thing? not have to be the same. Yeah, yeah, this is a thing. You do not have to be the same thing as your body is. Yeah. And like that kick started like my thinking about it and my journey because then I realized like, oh my god, wait, maybe, maybe yeah. this is the problem. A whole world <laughs> um, opened up. Right? And then to hear you say that you were like, oh yeah, when you identified as non binary, that kind of like made me think. Mm. I just think it's kind of funny how we like yeah <laughs> well i mean i feel like it's always um like i i don't think anyone's gonna or maybe they will i don't know but i feel like people don't really realize they're non-binary without other people around them um you know talking about it or or without them knowing it's a thing i don't think people will mm-hmm. realize because it's such a, a non you know possibility in society so you're not really taught the the different genders right. or you know anything in school so i guess if yeah. you don't actively are in that environment where mm-hmm. you learn about the possibilities of of being trans in in non-binary ways um i don't think you'll you'll get there by yourself i don't know <laughs> probably not what really stuck with me was a thing that my dutch teacher um once said i think he was one of the first adults to like um, asked me like back then there was another um, trans um, man in our um, or boy I'd say we were like 17 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in our class um, and so at the end of one of my tests my teacher just sat me down and was like hey are you the same as that kid um, and I was like no <laughs> but <laughs> hold on <laughs> hold on here I have some theory for you um, which was wild because like just the fact that he saw yeah. was validating, but also super weird because I was like, how? How have I like not seen this and not known this about myself for ages? And how how were you able to like solve that yeah. puzzle <laughs> by just looking at me? Yeah, that's wild. So, right? But then I explained like, okay, so I'm non-binary, which means I'm, you know, not a boy, not a girl, somewhere in between, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then my teacher said, it's... Um, so interesting and i think he used like a positive word like wonderful or something um like it's like so wonderful that you're you've been born in this age and that you mm. get to explore this and get to know this because if you were born 60 years earlier you would have probably like had felt the same things mm. had felt like the same feelings had felt the same dysphoria dysphoria but you would have never like known what yeah, the had cause the language, was yeah yeah right and that really stuck with me i was like mm. oh that is so like so right like this is a thing of all ages but we yeah. just only finally are now starting to in western culture at least like start to have the language and 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 the ways to express ourselves which i yeah. think is you know really cool mm-hmm, true and i think also in in like something i've um felt i guess in more recently in watching um mostly like ryan murphy shows um shows that are have queer characters and stuff like that um but also talk about like the history of of queer people basically it's made me more aware of um you know how far society has come and not only in terms of having the language but also just in um you know your safety as a queer person in this mm-hmm. era and the countries we live in especially oh yeah it's such a big difference and like i always knew but for some reason it just didn't really hit home until i actually like paid attention to it and thought it through so like i watched um ratchet recently the netflix mm-hmm. series and they have uh like they treat lesbians um to cure them of their homosexuality and i was like oh yeah that's like a thing and and just to like actively see it even though it's like fiction Mm -hmm. i was like holy shit like that's actually what people did you know that's so wild yeah right yeah we're in that sense very lucky to have been born um in this day and age i oh i had like I guess we're we're moving away from our identities into like media representation, but that's fine. I was watching 
um, a Dutch show, like mm-hmm. just before this, um, called Hai and Sai, which um, he is a she. The like, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of an outdated like <laughs> title, but yeah. whatever, we'll roll with it. It's about it's about trans people, um, and there was this like one um, eleven year old girl um, yeah. on the show uh, who's like in process of like. Um, trying to get hormones and stuff or like um Hormone blockers, blockers. And, yeah. Uh, yeah exactly um but i just like i was watching it and i got so emotional because <laughs> it was like here's this like 11 year old kid that can already know who she is and what she wants because we finally have like the education and we finally mm. have like the means and the openness slowly to like let these kids be themselves and i just got so emotional because i was just like if I would have been like, if I would have heard about things like gender and being non-binary at like twelve, mm. this could have saved me five years of like yeah. depression. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, yeah, it's just I'm like I'm so happy for the future generations mm-hmm. that they like hopefully get to get to like have stuff yeah, like this. Totally, and it's so wild because like there's such a long way to go still, mm-hmm. but the progress we've made is still like ginormous yeah it's really in like weird (laughs) such a short time Mm -hmm. as well because when i first realized that i was non-binary i don't think non-binary was even a word in the dutch language yet which is like that's like five six years ago maybe Mm. seven eight i don't know i think like like, tumblr also (laughs) played a big (laughs) role in just for sure (laughs) you know like the, the queer community on tumblr is insane like it's especially when we were like 16 it was oh, pretty man. much the only place on the internet where like such a large group of queer people like mm-hmm. came yeah, together. Yeah, because it was the only like anonymous yeah. social platform in that sense, I guess. And it was the place where you would spew all your deepest, darkest <laughs> emo emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but I mean that really, really helped mm-hmm. for sure. But like even even then, it was like all in English. Like everything I yeah. ever learned about the topic i had to like find on tumblr and mm. i had to find it in english because there there were no dutch words for being no binary there were no dutch gender neutral pronouns and just to see the progress that we made yeah. in like seven to eight years is like is wild yeah would you say that like gender neutral pronouns are i mean like <laughs> i don't know how to like put it but I don't, I wouldn't say they're common, obviously, but like, no. would you say people are like aware of them at all or not? Uh, in Holland, uh, in the Netherlands. Mm, <laughs> um, ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess in like, if you, <laughs> if you would say in the more woke <laughs> yeah, circles, yeah. I suppose people kind of know about them. Um but they're they're not super common and i think a lot of like a lot of people still don't know about them and even then like i personally don't even like the dutch gender neutral <laughs> yeah, pronouns same. that much so it's just like well there's words i guess mm. they're not my preferred words but they're words <laughs> yeah <laughs> they work so yeah I don't so know. you also don't like ask people to use them in dutch i have been asking people more Mm-hmm. So recently, I used to I used to never ask it because I just kind of felt like, well, I don't like the words and like being like um, being like gendered, like more stereotypically female doesn't bother me that much. I that's what I like used to be like. But then I guess about uh, maybe a year, maybe two years ago, I, I kind of felt that shifting mm-hmm. um, as well. And definitely like um living in a english speaking country um where people did use like they them pronouns for me consistently and then coming back yeah. that's when i really felt like oh i i outgrew um like um gendered pronouns, pronouns and <laughs> yeah. i really really want to like start using um neutral pronouns mm-hmm. also in dutch because it's just it became it it used to like not give me dysphoria and now it was starting to give me dys- dysphoria so recently i have been um asking people more but what i usually do is just like so um i would prefer it if you would like address me in a neutral way these are the pronouns that like the dutch language like 
kind of provide. Yeah. You can use those <laughs> if you want, or you can just be creative, find your own way to like address me neutrally. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun. It's Here's not my the problem. It's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's yeah. an interesting point because um, I lived in the UK and uh, I feel like it really changed the way I view myself even um, mm -hmm. because I wasn't like I, I, I didn't really openly come out as non-binary. I still really haven't. Um, I mean, I made one video on our channel um, <laughs> about it, but it's not like, you know, I'm openly non-binary. Yeah. Um, but living in, in the UK, I... I saw so many more non-binary and trans people mm -hmm. um, living there, you know, um, and especially on like dating apps, weirdly, um, there was a lot of trans people <laughs> and it kind of just, I don't know. I think just being around people, like in Belgium, I didn't really know anyone who identified as non-binary, um, maybe one or two people. Um, and. I feel like in the UK people are just more like living openly as non-binary people um, mm -hmm. because obviously in the English English language um, they them pronouns are more common um, especially than gender neutral pronouns in Dutch um, so I feel like they're just yeah it's just easier for non-binary people in the UK or in English speaking countries to uh, you know ask people to use gender neutral pronouns and I feel like in that sense I felt more comfortable there <laughs> weirdly um, because obviously a lot of people that I hung out were uh, hung out with were queer because mm -hmm. um, that's naturally the, the, the people I like <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know mm -hmm. I tracked it, or something yeah but it also feels like like less pressure I guess like I always have felt less pressure in English to ask people to use gender neutral pronouns because mm. I was just like well there's the the language you know has it so yeah. please use it yeah. whereas in Dutch it always kind of felt like like putting this extra burden on someone like oh now you have to like make an, an extra like mental note every time you like talk to me or talk about me because you're gonna have to like find all these like creative <laughs> ways to like bend bend the rules of of like language and grammar so you can address me in a neutral way um but then like since pronouns like gender neutral dutch pron pronouns have like started to get more recognition i've started to like feel less of that pressure mm -hmm. uh, and i was just like okay yeah I, I i could and i should and i want to like ask this of of people so i'm gonna yeah um but i also really think it um it's also really important how your um environment like reacts to it yeah um because i'm in a much more progressive environment now as i was a couple years ago mm -hmm. and so everyone around me just adapts to the pronouns um apologizes um like smoothly up. and not excessively yeah. um if they like make a mistake um which which also really helps because mm -hmm. that way it feels like okay yeah they they don't make me feel like it's a burden yeah when I, when i ask them to use pro, mm. pronouns so now i don't like feel that it's a burden anymore yeah. either if that makes sense that mm -hmm. was kind of yeah random. totally <laughs> no yeah <laughs> it makes total sense um yeah i mean i personally don't really use gender neutral pronouns because mm -hmm. well for the first like for the first of all i, I don't really am out <laughs> as non-binary i just mostly live mm -hmm. as like you know a guy just making videos on the internet but i'm not out i mean <laughs> like my no. employers don't know you know like stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah um and it's not something i actively talk about with friends who aren't like in my immediate <laughs> like friend group yeah <laughs> um so i kind of just well partly that and also partly because um i don't really feel a connection with any pronouns like binary or non-binary mm -hmm. it's just like um all pronouns are kind of meh to me so i just yeah. really like the people i feel comfortable asking um i ask to just not use any gendered words like bro or dude or man um <laughs> because that just like ugh, feels wrong um 
but in terms of pronouns i'm just like i've just kind of given up to be honest <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like you know i don't i will never feel like i don't feel like any of them are me if that makes sense mm -hmm. so yeah. i don't really bother <laughs> with, <laughs> with pronouns yeah i don't mm -hmm. know i wonder if that will change because like mm. that's kind of what it felt like for me at first when i was like um yeah you can use she you can use whatever i don't i don't really care yeah i also felt like oh none of this fits me and then mm -hmm. slowly i like grew into being like oh no actually th this one is better than the other one <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's definitely a, like a spectrum and it changes sometimes from day to day um because i do have like days where if people call me like if people use male pronouns for me i just feel really weird like it just feels so wrong um yeah but then other days i'm like whatever so True. it's already so different on a day-to-day -day basis that i feel like it there's a very large chance it might like at some point in my life mm -hmm. change um in the sense that i i permanently want to change my uh pronouns but yeah we'll see <laughs> <laughs> but i think that's also like an important conversation to have because mm -hmm. That's also a thing that, like, baby, baby Laura, like, baby queer me, like, didn't understand or hadn't been taught is mm -hmm. the fact that, like, you know, your identity is, is, is this journey, is this process, and it can change over time. And, yeah. you know, you can, you can start thinking that you're a trans man and end up, like, feeling mm -hmm. more non-binary, or you can start you know with this one pronoun and then move over to another one because it feels more comfortable but you, you kind of don't really get taught that because yeah the like mainly um cis straight narrative is kind of like there's these people <laughs> they are born this way and they will always be this way yeah and then there's the queers <laughs> <laughs> well yeah and but... they have and then they yeah but it's like well and then they're I guess my point is, because I wasn't done yet, is like, and then, you know, the narrative for, for queer people is like, okay, so you you come out, yeah, and then the narrative is that's one singular event, but spoiler alert, it's not. Well, yeah, and also <laughs> you just... You just keep coming out continuously. And also um, just the thing, like, is the idea is like, once you've come out as one thing, that's like the one thing you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's like, no, I, I might want to, I might want to change that. Well, not like I, but, wanting to change, but it's like you feel yeah. different, you know? Yeah, right? You you just, you grow up and yeah. you, you learn more things yeah. like about the world and about yourself. And it's like, oh, this this other thing actually like fits better. But we, we don't really get taught that there's like room for that expansion because yeah. you've already did the big coming out thing as the one thing. <laughs> now you're going to have to do it all over again as a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> and people are just like, oh. And it's just, that's interesting to me because I think um it's a beautiful thing that we get to grow and explore and um you know try on all these new identities and <laughs> like see what fits best yeah um so i think there should be more room for that definitely and i feel like also it's i don't really <laughs> i want to say i don't really trust people <laughs> but that's like <laughs> an extreme thing <laughs> but i don't really i don't trust people <laughs> <laughs> no i don't i don't like trust people who <laughs> are like cis and straight and just never feel like that's the sound bite that's, that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> i just feel like it's weird I, it just doesn't compute in my head that people can be that way for like their whole lives and just never feel an inkling of doubt you know that, yeah, that you never assess yeah like, like your own being that you never question yeah. these labels and these identities that like get put up like get put on you from mm -hmm. from birth basically that you never assess to be like yeah this fits or no actually it doesn't because i That's feel like to me as well yeah for me it's also like so tied to just growing up in a sense because mm -hmm. i've like aside from being queer like my who i am as a person has changed so much uh, since, you know, between between now and when I was, like, 16. I mean, that's, like, you know, <laughs> so long. And mm -hmm. I feel like nobody, like, surely nobody is the same person at 23 as they were when they were 16, right? 
I'd hope not. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's... I, I just find it so weird how your gender or sexuality can just not be a part of that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> We're both too queer. <laughs> amaze me. <laughs> Uh, that's that's yeah. the title of this video. Straight people <laughs> amaze me. <laughs> they really do, though. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right. All right. Should um, we leave it here for our very first conversation about gender? Yeah, and I think we've touched on uh, quite a few aspects. I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't really know, like, if people will get anything out of the, watching this but i have actually like since i made that one video people mm -hmm. have been asking me a lot of questions about being non-binary so i hope this video really? and just by hearing us talk about it mm -hmm. will give them some perspective i guess um so yeah i guess we'll see yeah <laughs> i guess we will and i mean people should feel free to like comment below and let Absolutely. us know what do you want to hear us talk about what's interesting was this even interesting <laughs> yeah. um like please feedback any feedback we'll take it all <laughs> to be honest we are struggling to like make content in quarantine so please audience member do keep that yes. in, in mind <laughs> feedback but keep it nice yeah <laughs>